Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Zip, Associate Editor of Solar Power World, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Attachment Solutions Incorporating Photovoltaic Power Generation and Metal Roofing. I'd also like to take a moment to thank S5 for sponsoring this webinar. And before we begin, we'll just go over some house cleaning items. I'd like to mention that this webinar will be available after the presentation on solarpowerworldonline.com and also will be emailed to all registrants. Secondly, there will be a question and answer session at the end of all the presentations. We encourage you to participate. You may submit your questions at any time throughout the webinar by typing them into the GoToMeeting panel, which is on your right. And lastly, we encourage everyone to tweet about key topics and discuss takeaways using, using the Twitter hashtag SolarWebinar. So at this time, I would like to introduce our presenter. Today we have Rob Haddock, S5 founder and CEO. Rob has 40 years of experience in the construction industry with roots as a contractor. Today Rob is a well-known metal roof consultant an author, speaker, and inventor holding more than 20 patents. His technical writings have been translated into eight languages along with numerous accolades and professional affiliation. Last year, Rob was inducted into the Metal Construction Hall of Fame, the highest honor in his industry. So we are thrilled to have him here with us today. And Rob, please go ahead with your presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you. And good morning or afternoon, as the case may be. Um, these are the subtopics that we'll be looking at today. First, the basics of standing seam metal roofing, and then some basics of S5 clamping technology and its integration with photovoltaic arrays. And then we'll look at some synergies of the marriage of PV to metal roofing. And finally, we'll look at some case studies. Uh, before we start, and just to clarify vernacular, uh, because many in the PV industry refer to PV modules as panels, and many in the metal roofing industry refer to metal roofing panels as panels, so when I use the word panel during this presentation, I'll be referring to roof panels, and I'll use the word module when I'm talking about PV panels or modules. As a general overview, it's important to understand some basics about standing seam metal roofing. This is especially true of metal because unlike other roof types, metal is part of the structure. It has structural characteristics, making it different from every other type of roofing. Metal can therefore be successfully integrated with solar because it is, of itself, a mounting platform and a structure. The other thing that's important is that, as you will see, metal is perhaps the only roof type that will outlive the solar. Um, metal roof metal roofing really is quite different. So metal is different, yes, but is it a new idea? Well, hardly. Contrary to popular belief, uh, metal has been around for some time. This cathedral in Cologne, Germany, dates back to the earliest, uh, to the early 13th century. So from Notre Dame in Paris, to the London Houses of Parliament, to the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, the Royal Palace in Madrid, and the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, metal has been used and coveted for centuries of time. While most of these old structures were crafted roofs of copper, lead, and even gold leaf, most modern metal roofing in the U.S. today is coated steel. Steel has to be coated, obviously, with some other more corrosion-resistant metal so that it prevents the oxidation of the base steel sheet. Popular metals include galvanized and aluminized. Zinc-coated or galvanized has been used for more than 100 years, 
and aluminum coated or aluminized has been used for about 50. But the most popular coating today is an alloy of the two, trade named Galvalum. That coating has been around now for almost 40 years. So if you're working on an unpainted steel roof constructed within the last 30 years or so, odds are very, very good that it's Galvalum. If it is pre-painted, factory painted, and of the same approximate vintage, odds are a little, a little bit less, but they're still very good that the substrate is Galvalum. You don't paint instead of a metallic coating, by the way. So every painted roof you see also has a metallic coating beneath the paint. The alloy coating thickness on the base steel sheet is very, very thin, about 0.6 mils or six ten thousandths of an inch. Just for a sense of scale, a human hair is about 40 ten thousandths of an inch, and here we're talking about six ten thousandths. So to use a technical term, it's mighty skinny. There are a few things to know about metallurgy when it comes to any coated steel roofing. One is that the widely published galvanic scale that you see on your screen now doesn't always tell the whole truth. While the scale depicts base metals and their behavior, any metal forms an oxide layer that may act quite differently than the base metal. So the scale can be used as a guide to begin, but don't be too hasty to draw conclusions based on the galvanic scale alone. Zinc and aluminum, as you see, they're fairly close on the galvanic scale and they get along with each other very, very well. Copper, down here in the middle of the scale, does not get along with any coated steel at all. And while stainless appears near the bottom of the scale, quite distant from zinc and aluminum and steel, uh, it actually gets along with almost everything because of its very passive behavior. Notice where graphite is, way down here on the bottom, distant from zinc and aluminum. And graphite eats away aluminum oxide layers. So graphite pencil marks on galvalum coating will turn red with rust within a few years. What about service life? The Galvalum steel standing seam roof has a service life between 50 and 70 years, depending upon environmental severity. And at a 93% recycle rate, steel is the most highly recycled construction material available. Recent industry research substantiates these service life claims with in-depth field and lab studies of 15 aged roofs from five different climate zones all over the United States. This roof is projected to have a total of 66 years service life. Others in the study were quite similar, ranging between 50 and 70 years. This is true not only of the base material, galvalum steel, but also of the total roof system including requisite butyl polymer sealants that are hidden within the joints and laps of the roof. This sealant is behaving as new after almost 33 years of service. So most aged roofs of this type, galvalum coated steel, are still good candidates for solar arrays, even though they may be aged many years. Standing seam roofs come in many different styles and geometries, some of which are shown here, and there are many others that are not shown here. These are generally divided into three categories. The first is machine folded, and you should be seeing a video now that depicts a seam folded example. Others are simply snapped together 
without machine folding. And hopefully you're seeing a video that depicts an example of that. And there are other examples shown in the top of your screen. And a few others utilize a cap seam so that you have two twin male legs and then a female cap component that snaps over the male legs as you should be watching now. Machine folded seams normally use dual component clips for their attachment to the building structure. With this clip type, the top component seams into the metal roof and moves thermally with the roof as it expands and contracts in reaction to its temperature change. This roof type is very typical to the pre-engineered metal building industry. Most snap together roof types utilize one piece clips. With this clip type attachment, the metal panels ride frictionally on the clip when they respond to thermal expansion and contraction. Some residential and light commercial roof profiles are installed over solid wood decks while others are capable of spanning over open framing without supporting deck. This is common for commercial and, and industrial construction. The standard spacing for these structural purlins or joists, as the case may be, is five feet. Hence, the attachment of the roof to the structure is also five feet. Close examination from the top side will usually reveal clip locations if they need to be known. Standing seam roofs are generally engineered and tested to withstand design wind uplift forces. The testing is specific to the panel's clip attachment spacing, usually five feet, but in this case, much closer. The point is that these roofs can be designed to resist almost any uplift load. In this case, 187 pounds. The takeaway here is that modern standing seam roofing is quite probably the most engineered, durable, serviceable, long-lasting roof on the market today, and the best possible candidate, therefore, for a solar array. Now that we have some basic understanding of metal roofing, Let's look at some basics of S5 attachments and how they interface with metal roofing and PV. The S5 clamp was designed more than 20 years ago by a veteran of, of and a consultant to the metal roofing industry, that'd be me, to provide a solution for penetration-free attachment of rooftop accessories. It's compatible with all types of standing seam roofing and is the metal roofing industry's standard for the attachment of a host of rooftop ancillaries. You see, S5 came from the metal roofing industry into the solar industry, not the other way around. That's why it is recommended by roof manufacturers all over the globe and has been successfully used on over a million and a half roofs. The S5 clamp grips the seam in such a way that it can provide hundreds, even thousands of pounds of holding strength without doing any harm to the roof. It's an interlocking mechanical attachment requiring no ballast and of course, no piercing of the roof panels. No holes, and by the way, no rails either on this particular job. Even the ancillaries can and should be attached using the same technology, combiner boxes, 
conduits, wire chases, service walkways, and almost anything related to rooftop mounting can be done without intrusion to the roof, preserving all warranties. As we discussed before, standing seam comes in a, a variety of profile geometries and still many others that aren't seen here. And S5 has developed clamps specifically designed to each one of them. No clamp can effectively fit all seams with one clamp design. S5 is sold and distributed with series 300 stainless mounting hardware and bit, and bit tip drivers included. The stainless hardware is metallurgically compatible with any metal roof, but because aluminum clamps are dissimilar to copper, S5 also offers a special brass clamp for use on copper roofs. Notice here that S5 only uses round point set screws. This is important. I'm going to show you why. And beware of lookalikes that use cup point set screws. The round point of S5 does not violate the thin, fragile galvalume coatings that I just described that are providing the corrosion protection of steel roofing. And a round point does not cause fatigue fracture of other soft metals like titanium, zinc, and copper. Unlike a cup point set screw, which breaches those coatings, violating warranties, and creating a corrosion or fracture site, you see the slight depression here made by the round point screw that creates a mechanical interlock without breaking the paint or the protective metallic galvalum coating beneath the paint. S5 has also done extensive salt fog testing of the attachment to prove that it causes no premature corrosion to the roof. While 1,000 hour uh, salt fog testing is considered the industry standard, S5 has doubled that testing for 2,000 hours. And as you can see, even after the galvalume coating has completely corroded from the salt chamber, the clamp and set screws have induced no premature corrosion at their interface. Extensive testing for holding strength takes the guesswork out of any application so that it can be proven to the specifics of any, of any project and the unique S5 attachment method provides holding strength unequaled by any other product in the market. To find the holding strength for S5 on any panel seam, go to the S5 website. You should know that the holding strength is contingent on a number of different variables. One is the type of metal being attached to, another is the thickness of the metal, another is the specific geometry of the, of the seam profile, and so on. So if you go to the um, S5 homepage and click on the button below the pretty lady here, After clicking OK to the um, terms of use, you're going to see this screen come up. Now in the solar industry, we're interested most in this load orient orientation, the load pulling up from the panel. You see the two little load arrows on the left and on the right. One is, is looking at load pulling parallel to the roof surface and the other is perpendicular or normal to the roof surface. So click on that one and our load test table will appear.
the table is columnar with the clamp model on the far left. And you would look up by panel manufacturer in this column, which is alphabetized. Then you'll see the name of the specific profile in the next column, the material thickness at which the test was conducted, the ultimate failure load in pounds. And by the way, you can toggle between uh, English and metric if desired. Then the next column will show the failure mode. And the last column on the right will show the allowable load. Um, note that the factor of safety up here in this window can be, can be changed. It will default to a factor of safety of 3 on this load table. But it can be changed by the user if desired, and it will recalculate. So the final number in the allowable load column is one-third the number in the ultimate load column. When relying upon these tested load values, it's important to be sure that the set screws are tensioned adequately because the tests were run at a certain set screw tension. And the strength of the clamp on the seam is related to the set screw tension. We'll talk more about how to do that later on in the presentation. Because I was a contractor by trade in my earlier years, I designed S5 with the installer in mind. I'm really sensitive to things that work well for installers, having been one myself for many years. That's why the installation is so simple and uses tools that are common to the roofing trades. Many in the industry are familiar with S5 standing seam clamps, but are somewhat less familiar that S5 has also innovated prudent solutions for face attached profiles. These profiles are called by different names through fasten, face fasten, face attached, but they all mean the same thing. And most if not all face-attached profiles, most, I should say, but not all face-attached profiles, utilize a trapezoidal rib geometry, just describing the geometric shape present in that rib configuration. While S5 solutions for these type panels do penetrate the panels, they also have industry standard sealants applied within the base to simplify installation and ensure weather integrity. These are the same butyl polymers or rubbers that are used in the gasketing of the, of the laps and joints by the roof manufacturers themselves. The Versa bracket shown here is attached through the panel to the underlying structure and is used for trapezoidal profiles and rail mounted arrays. And the protea bracket is truly universal, fitting trapezoidal profiles of almost any dimension. These rib dimensions come in all different sizes and flavors. And so the protea bracket was designed to fit all of the above. It can attach anywhere along the panel rib, providing over 500 pounds of withdrawal strength. And because of the versatility of the L bracket that comes with this part, the protea bracket can be used with a top mount rail, a side mount rail, or with the S5 direct attach PV kit, which we'll talk about more in a moment. And S5 also has solutions for corrugated profiles. This one attaches through the valley to the underlying structure. This is considered culturally OK in the United States market, although in some markets it's not. So S5 also makes this core bracket, which attaches through the top crest to either the sheet alone or directly through the sheet and into the building structure. 
usually a wood purlin. To avoid jeopardizing roof system integrity, it's important for any roof, metal or otherwise, that the roof system manufacturer approve the method of interface with his roof system. Every major producer of standing seam in the U.S. has validated the appropriateness of S5 attachments by their endorsements and recommendations, not only for solar, but also for mounting of any rooftop ancillary, and the list keeps growing. Even the inventor of Galvalume coating technology himself has strongly endorsed S5, and the largest metal coil supplier in the U.S and the largest roof system manufacturer in the world, metal roof system manufacturer, and the largest portable roof panel machine manufacturer, all have endorsed S5 on an exclusive basis, not to mention uh, the iconic Jiggershaw of Sun Edison fame. Aside being the popular choice for rail-mounted systems, S5 is also innovated special hardware for the term we've trademarked direct attach. When using rails, the mini clamps resulting with the modules in portrait orientation to the roof. When using direct attach, the modules would be laid 90 degrees from that or transverse to the seams resulting with landscape orientation to the roof. In some cases, rail-mounted systems, an adapter or L-foot is used, and this depends upon the design of the rail. Here, this one has a bolting channel within its base. Tilted racking systems are also mounted with S5 clamps in similar fashion. But in all cases, the mounting is accomplished with zero penetration. While in some cases, rail mounting may, make, uh, may maximize space utilization, a metal roof already has rails inherent to its profile. So the use of manufactured rails, in some cases, seems a bit redundant. Direct attachment can be done for as little as six cents a watt hardware cost on a large array. With the PV, with the with the S5 PV kit, the use of rail is obviated. The following video will illustrate the basics of the PV kit for direct attach. What you will see in this video is the installation of two starting clamps measured up from the eave and spaced some distance apart across the seams. And then you'll see a string line attached to those and additional clamps added behind the string line. Then as the video progresses, you'll see them using a jig for the spacing of the clamps. And I think most of the rest is pretty self-explanatory.
The S5 PV kit assemblies are also UL2703 and 1703 approved for electrical bonding. So it is not necessary to interconnect adjacent modules electronic, electrically with copper wire and stainless lugs. It's, it automatically happens, the electrical bonding automatically happens when using the PV kit. This is the new S5 edge grab that's used in conjunction with direct attach. All grabs, both mid and edge, are universally adjustable on the threaded stud, fitting every major module producer's frame height. This is a frequently asked question. Which clamp do I use for my project? The answer is below the graphic. How is this done? How do we identify the roofing manufacturer, panel name, etc.? Well, it's done several ways. One way is to look at the architectural plans, especially if it's a new if it's new construction. Another is to inquire of the building owner because he may have recollection of the manufacturer of his roof. A third way is to give us dimensioned cross-sectional drawings. When you do that, we don't care if they're drawn to scale. Uh, we, don't, we don't grade on penmanship or spelling. You can see vertical here was spelled wrong. This was an actual uh, diagram that a customer sent us. But what is important is this dimensioning to show the dimension of direction as well as the height of the seam as you see here. And finally, you could take a photograph of the cross section of the panel. You do that from down at the eave where the panel terminates at its eave end. And when you photograph the profile of that panel, it's important to hold a tape measure up there somewhere so that we can get an idea of the scale. Oftentimes, we're sent a photograph with no way whatsoever to scale it, and we can't, that's not of a lot of use to us. And there's our toll free number. It'll be repeated at the end of the presentation. Once the manufacturer and profile name are known, a quick look at the load table that I just described to you earlier on the S5 website will identify the clamp that's been tested on that profile. So the first point in a good marriage is not to punch the roof full of holes. The majority of PV on membrane roofing is still done this way. This small system of 44 kilowatts has resulted with 268 penetrations through the roof. Roof penetration violates most roof warranties. And in the event of a leak, liability issues will arise. In addition to which, it's just plain time consuming and expensive. Each attachment you see here in this slide costs $45. An attachment to a standing seam metal roof costs about four and is done in seconds, literally. So the next point is product simplicity. It shouldn't take a rocket scientist, as you have seen. The next point is affordability. It's got to be cost effective. Now, here is S5's advertising claim. As low as 10 cents a watt mounting hardware costs. But we all know that manufacturers lie, right? <laughs> They always lie about what their stuff really costs. Well, here are three projects that we'll look at in our case studies. But here are the mounting hardware costs, just for a preview. And installation costs are so low that they're almost as unbelievable. But we'll also have a closer look at that.
Don't be price gouged when sourcing S5 components. There are many gray market suppliers, what we call gray market suppliers, who are not approved S5 distributors, who don't honor our recommended resale prices. And that's why S5 publishes MSRPs online so you'll know what you should be paying. Here, the S5U Mini, which is our most popular clamp, sells in quantities of 1,000 for $3.37. Four cases, 250 per case, 1,000 parts or greater, 337 each. And the greater the purchase quantity, the better the price. As you can see here, a quantity of 600 plus is 552. Two cases, 300 each, 552 for a quantity of 600 plus. Now this is for the S5 PV kit. In the quantities that we just looked at, we saw a clamp for $3 and change, and now a PV kit for 5 and change. That's under 9 bucks a set. At two sets per module, and a 240 watt module. That's a total of less than seven and a half cents per, per watt. And larger quantities yield even greater economies. Final point under synergies is service life compatibility. And this is perhaps the, the most vital. So what is the service life of PV? Well, we all know that the warranted life is somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 years, but the service life is more like 35, give or take. PV warranties tend to be relatively conservative at 25 years. So let's take a look at the service life of some conventional roof types. This survey, by the way, was put together by Carl Cash, uh, who works for Simpson, Gumperts, and Hager, a well-respected roof consulting firm with offices all over the U.S. And it was based on a survey, a nationwide survey, that they did of the entire roofing industry. So here we see the service life of built-up roofing at 19.8 years, APP modified asphalt at 16 and SBS modified asphalt at 17, and TPO at 14.8. Service life of other commercial roof types, not shown here but included in that survey, ranged between 12 and 20 years. Well, if you do the math here, you can see right away that there's a little bit of an issue over here in that column on the right. It amounts to what I call a roof service life deficit. In other words, the roof life is expiring long before the service life of the PV to the tune of 15 to 23 years, depending upon the roof type. Now, the consequence of that is fairly obvious. When the roof life expires, dismantle the PV array, tear the roof off, throw it away, re-roof, and then reassemble the PV array. Roof replacement has a huge economic impact. You've got to look at the roof and the PV system together as a single asset, and then assess the cost, the total cost of ownership of the whole asset over the whole life of both roof and PV. When you do that, the costs of roof replacement become magnified almost beyond belief. Now let's look at a contrasting situation with standing seam metal roofing. Again, a service life of PV of about 35 years, service life of standing seam, galvalum coated steel standing seam between 50 and 70, so now we have no roof replacement. The roof outlives the PV system, resulting with what I call a roof service life surplus of 25 years or more in many cases.
Now let's move on to look at some case studies. We'll start with a quite large project in New Jersey. This was a Butler MR24 roof, and the modules were BP solar 200 watt modules. This was about the time that BP was exiting the industry, which explains the multicolored modules they were using up and selling out their inventory. The S5 E Mini was used with a PV kit for direct attach. The cost per watt here for all mounting hardware was about seven cents. On this project, attachment was made in three locations per module, which is a conservative approach. On larger jobs like this, a jig is normally made to locate additional clamps upslope from the first row, just like you saw in the video. The dimensioning of the holes in the jig correlates to the module dimension. After Proving the accuracy of the jig, the crews on this job install S5 clamp and PV kit sets ahead of other crews that are placing modules. Here you see them using a jig. And here they pre-installed quite a lot of clamp and PV kit sets. Using this method, clamp PV kit installation has been done in under 15 seconds per clamp or per set with a team of two men, translating to 120 installations per man hour. 15 seconds per clamp times two men is 30 seconds, or 120 clamp sets per man hour. At a $60 an hour sell rate, which is easy and convenient to figure, it's a dollar a minute, the labor cost per clamp set is about 50 cents. With three clamp sets per module, that cost is $1.50 per module. With two clamp sets per module, a less conservative approach, that cost is down to $1 a module. And with a 200 watt module, that translates to less than a penny per watt in labor costs in both cases. Notice that this project was done several years ago. With today's module ratings of 250 watts or more, the same cost would be under six cents rather than the seven that you see here. If attached at two sets per module instead of the three, the cost would drop below four cents in total hardware costs. Interesting that on this project, S5 was used for a host of other things besides the module mounting, like the attachment of this temporary material conveyance walkway, temporary barricades, temporary walkway safety rails, and even permanent barricades and railings. used for wire management, both above the seams and below the seams. Not to mention, even below the modules. Combiner boxes. And in each case, not only preserving the integrity of the roof, but also saving money over other attach attachment alternatives. There's a quick look at the inverter room, and we'll move on to the next case study, which is also in New Jersey. And now we're at Fort Dix, the, uh, the uh, headquarters building. Here it was a Merchant Nevin zip rib roof with 18 inch seam spacing and the clamp model was the S5Z Mini, which is one of our more expensive clamps at 381 MSRP in the 2500 piece quantity required for this project. The modules were sharp 220s and clamp attachment in this case was done on every second seam except in the high uplift perimeter zones of the roof where it was done at every seam. You can see here the space loss from the direct attach method, 
creating a narrow walk space between each seven rows of modules. Here on another project, the roof size was sufficient enough to leave walk space of about 12 inches between each module. This makes it easy to clean or maintain or replace modules, and in this particular case, it was also a desire of the building owner to be able to access modules easily. The next project is a small residential rail-mounted project in California. You see the seam profile there. The S5U clamp, which is by far our most popular and most versatile clamp, it'll fit about 80% of the standing seam profiles manufactured in North America, including the one inch high traditional double folded standing seam that was used uh, on this roof. Here the first clamp is being located, and although a hand wrench is being used, an electric gun is more advisable and certainly much faster. After the second clamp is located some distance from the first, a string line is pulled between the two of them and remaining clamps are infilled, like you saw in the video, to complete the first row. String lines were then used for layout of other clamp rows rather than a jig, as is sometimes done on smaller jobs like our case study here, where it just doesn't make sense to make a custom jig for a small number of modules. Even at a third or a fourth the pace of the previous method, it goes pretty quickly. Notice that the seam height here is only an inch. That makes it a bit difficult to get the gun low enough for the set screw tightening because the gun wants to foul in the flat of the panel. It's hard to get it into the, uh, into the set screw. Universal knuckle drivers are also available from S5 to facilitate clamp installation on seam profiles like that. Calibrated wrench tightening is not normally done for each clamp. You don't have to, unless the California DSA says so, <laughs> you don't have to individually tension and torque check every screw and every clamp. The usual procedure is to torque check every 50 or 100 just to be sure that the gun is delivering consistent and adequate set screw tension. And by the way, a dial indicating torque wrench is really the better tool for gun calibration rather than the click wrenches that are commonly available. And those are also available from S5. With clamps installed, rails are now attached to the S5 clamps, again using a calibrated gun with a deep well socket. And now we're ready for modules. Note that clamps are installed here on every panel seam to distribute loads uniformly into the roof structure. Installation of modules for this small system was complete in less than a day with a clamp cost of 4.4 cents per watt. Of course, you have to add the cost of the rail and the grabs uh, for apples to apples cost comparison with a, with direct attach methods. And I assume that rail and grabs are somewhere in the 20 cent per watt range. More recent, more recently, I don't have slides of it here, but more recently uh, we were used on a four megawatt rail mounted project at the Phoenix airport over all the, the car rental center. And the clamp cost on that job was 283 per piece. Uh, in the quantity, it was a very large quantity, but that resulted with a cost per watt, mounting cost of 2.4 cents per watt, plus uh, rail, obviously, and grabs. That concludes uh, this part of the presentation, and I'm going to turn this back to Kathy yes. for some closing slides. Yes, thank you, Rob. That was uh, very interesting stuff. Thank you for all the information. Um, and I'm sure now, after all the information, our audience has some questions, so we'll begin asking those. Remember, you can submit questions at any time in your GoToMeeting panel on your right. And we do have some to start with here. 
Um, so, Rob, let's start off. Um, if the roof is part of the mounting solution, does the cost of the roof also qualify for the 30% federal tax credit? A very, very good question. Thank you for that. Uh, and, the, and, and the jury remains out. Um, there are a number of projects I know where the building owner has taken that tax credit, uh, and I have never heard of the IRS challenging that. Now, I can't give professional tax advice. I can only relate my personal experiences. Um, there is there has not been an opinion letter written by the IRS regarding this, but some of you may remember uh, back in the days of the unmentionable outfit that went bust with a lot of federal money. Uh, they had an opinion letter from the IRS and, and, um, and, and users of their system were taking tax credit on the roof. It can be proven and demonstrated that the roof is, in fact, part of the mounting system. And so I presume that that's the reason that IRS has never challenged anyone that I'm aware of uh, when they take a tax credit on the cost of the roof when it's a metal roof. All right. Um, here's another one. How does attaching rigid PV module frames and rails impact the thermal expansion and contraction of the metal roof, and how do you accommodate for that? Uh, good question. Um, because the, the thermal movement of, of anything is, has, a, has a direct proportion to that thing's uh, unbroken length, a solar PV module has a very small unbroken length, uh, generally three to four feet when they're installed in the landscape fashion. So the PV modules, imagine that that roof underneath them is expanding and contracting um, as much as an inch or two, depending upon its, its total unbroken length. The clamp is mounted to the seam. The modules are mounted to the clamp. And the modules are also expanding and contracting, maybe at a rate slightly different than the roof. But the difference between the expansion of the module frame and the roof is very minimal. And it's accommodated by the flexure of the mid grab, which is between each module. So if you were to, if you were to run the math out, on that, you will find that the, that the differential movement between the module frame and the roof is, is very, very fractional. And that's taken up by flexure of the mod, both the module frame as well as the S5 mid-grab. All right. Um, Rob, what wind speed can these systems withstand? Um, we could probably have another hour-long presentation um, <laughs> concerning wind effects and wind engineering for roofs and PV. There is uh, no, no quick answer to what wind speed will, will a system withstand. It has to be wind speed has to be translated per ASCE 7 from miles per hour into pounds per square foot of uplift. And the pounds per square foot of uplift that result from the same wind speed are going to be different on a building that's 12 feet tall as opposed to a building that's 40 feet tall. So there are so many variables, and th these are the things that an engineer would look at in the ASCE-7 uh, code or, or standard that tells him how to translate wind uplift or wind mi in miles per hour into units of measurement that we can use, pounds per square foot, depending upon a host of variables, the height of the building, the geometric footprint of the building, the surrounding terrain, and so on and so forth. So it, I can't answer a question about, you know, I can answer it this way. Any wind speed desired, and any wind speed 
can be resisted, but those engineering steps have to take place in order to translate miles per hour into pounds per square foot. And then we can look at pounds per square foot and deal with that. And we can withstand any desire just by the amount of frequency of attachment. Rob, there's a couple of questions about uh, modules. I'll, I'll kind of uh, form them into one question here. Uh, can glass-on-glass -glass modules that are heavier than normal be placed on a metal roof? And then someone else is asking about um, a solution for PV modules with no frames. OK, thanks. Those are kind of related questions. Um, in answer to the first, most of the glass-on-glass -glass modules that I have seen are in the neighborhood of 4 PSF. Um, most metal roofed structures, I mean, I don't want to overgeneralize here, but if it's a pre-engineered metal building, it's a little unlikely that the structure, it's, it's not really a question of the roof, it's the structure beneath the roof, uh, would support an additional uh, four pounds per square foot or more. Now, on conventional structures, if it's a, if it's a, if it, if it's not a pre-engineered building, or even if it is, but it utilizes bar joists as opposed to cold form uh, Z perlins, it may. The only, you know, the only way to know is, is to check the original building plans um, with a qualified engineer to give it a look over and validate that the building structure will with will will tolerate the extra 4 PSF. Um, with respect to the next part of the question, Kathy, repeat that, I think. Yes, uh, they were just wondering if there's a solution for frameless solar modules. Um, we have worked from time to time here at S5 uh, on different grabs for glass-to-glass -glass modules. Uh, and, and we have some uh, in development stages, but Frankly, they're they're developed far enough to produce, but we have never we have never had anyone come forward and want any production quantity of those things. So we've never put them into production. All right, thank you, Rob. Uh, the next few here should be a little a little uh, simpler to answer. Are your clamps do your clamps work with um, other commercially available uh, rail producers? Um, do our clamps work with other commercially available rail rail producers? Yeah, absolutely. If, I, if I'm understanding that question right, our clamps work with almost any rail producer and are used regularly and even recommended by most rail producers. All right, I think we have time for uh, just a couple more here. Um, Someone's asking, they're saying that some of the examples, most of them were focused on flat roof areas. Do the S5 clamps work well on other uh, pit roof pitches? Absolutely. In fact, as I mentioned during the uh, presentation, uh, S5 came from the metal roof industry into, it was, adapt it was adopted by the solar community. Uh, but it is used in, in many different applications, and one of them is even snow retention. So a steep metal roof in a, in a northern climate where snow and ice uh, is prevalent, that snow and ice can present a sliding hazard if it avalanches off the roof. And so one of the uses of S5 involves snow retention. And here we're talking about thousands of pounds of load that is now in a direction parallel uh, to the roof surface. So the quick answer to the question is yes, absolutely. Uh, and provide holding strength parallel to the roof, equal to or even in excess of the holding strength uh, that's normal or perpendicular, i.e. wind. Okay, I think that is all the questions we have time for right now. Rob, you've been doing a lot of talking, so we appreciate um, all of your insight. Um, we're very glad to have you with us today. And I would also like to thank everyone in our audience for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned something from it. And we ask you to please join us for other upcoming Solar Power World webinars. There's lots more to learn. So thank you, Rob, and thanks, everyone, for listening.